Daniel didn't know the extent and the consequence of his spiritual prayer life until the angel came there and said, for 21 days I have been battling the demon, the prince of Persia. Now you've got to listen to this because even though we are under new covenant, we think, well, Jesus took care of all that. Yes, he did for you. But he still says fight. Fight the good fight of faith. He speaks about spiritual warfare. That the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Something that is in the heavenlies. Something that is over this nation right now. Has to be pulled down and it cannot be pulled down by Joe Biden. It cannot be pulled down by, by the President of the United States. It cannot be pulled down by politicians. It can only be pulled down by the spiritual leaders that have set their heart towards the kingdom. Not towards failure, but towards the kingdom and said, Now we will pray and whatever spiritual stronghold is over our nation, it will come to an end. I am one of those voices. Just one. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, Jesus said. Whatever you loose on earth will be. Give me that big key that's in my office. You have a key. I was going to tell you the names of God, but I'm not going to. I'm going to get straight into, into the spirit of Python and the spirit that has joined forces in order to try and bring this about. And it's happening and it's taking place right now. Daniel did not know that when he was praying, and while he was fasting, that there was a fight going on in the heavenlies. And this is what the angel said to him. He said, Daniel, I have come from a battle for 21 days that Daniel fasted and prayed for 21 days. And he said, I have come because of your words. In other words, your prayers released me from that warfare. Now I have to return. Because the spirit of Greece has come to join the spirit of Persia. In order to bring about a victory, Daniel keep praying. Daniel keep giving, getting revelation. Because out of that revelation will come a revolution. Out of your revelation will come a revolution. I sing. Now, what I saw this morning when I was in prayer, besides anything else, that God was going to bring about a victory, a massive victory in this nation. But there were going to be some humbling moments in the White House and humbling moments for this president. This is not a, that I'm against him. I'm just telling you some humbling needs to start to take place. We need some humble people to come and to stand and to speak the truth. Humility is lacking. Okay, I'm not getting much response from that. And I, and I don't blame you because you're not sure where I'm coming from. As I was praying this morning, the Spirit took me into a heavenly place. And I began to realize that there was a stronghold that was joining the Pythos spirit. And now at this very hour, that spiritual force. Now remember, the angel spoke to Daniel about a prince of Persia and a prince of Greece. And the different princes, the ruling powers, or the, not ruling now, but the powers that are at war with the people of God and Israel specifically, are active at this very moment. And what are we doing? They have planned for the downfall of the American U.S. economy. They have pl planned for the closing of nonprofit companies and charitable organizations. They have planned for your downfall and for you to lose your money. They have, this is not about a, a liberal or, or a conservative or whatever. It's not about that. Their plan is to destroy and to, to, to suffocate the very life out of you. That's their plan. They are active right now. What are we doing about it? What is our responsibility? What is it that we are supposed to do to bring an end to this? Well, can we need to vote? Yes, okay, vote. Look what just happened. Vote. Do whatever you have to do. Make your voice known. But I'm telling you right now, the greatest power that you have and the key that you have is to find out what is happening in the spirit and begin to pray against that and declare that you are to totally inoperable. You cannot operate in, in the presence of the people of the living God and you cannot operate in the presence of the blood of Christ that speaks of better things than that of Abel. We are, of the, we are the princes of the blood royal. Do you understand that? If you do understand that, then I want every person watching me and all over the world to raise your hands up and say, I believe that my prayers make a difference. 
Therefore, what I perceive, I receive. So, Lord, I'm praying for perception to come in these next few minutes. That people would understand and see with the Spirit. And as they realize that their perception will bring about a prayer that will destroy this force that's trying to destroy America. And I can tell you many of the plans of the enemy at this time. I can tell you a lot of it. I don't need to. I've just told you a few things and you, eventually it gets onto the, to your national news. To your news to go and find out that's what they're planning. What is God saying though? Now, let me say this to you in a, in a very small teaching. The spirit that we are dealing with, besides pythos, which we know God said he'll deal with, we have to pray against, and we have to sow into his kingdom. But the second one is Jezebel. Why are you talking about Jezebel today? Because this morning I saw those two forces joining because this, the python is losing power and losing momentum, just like when Gabriel was, spoke about the, the prince of Persia being brought down, this prince of Greece joined him to, in that battlefield. Now, I know some of you may be saying, I think you're crazy, and maybe I am, but I am biblically crazy. And so what I'm giving you right now is what happened in the Bible and what's happening right now. Every Bible name has a meaning. So much so that sometimes when God changed the nature of a person, he also changed his or her name. Now, so Neil will tell you, and show you in code breakers, not today, that how it was, I heard the plans of demonic powers when I was in Detroit, Michigan, and prophesied when they said, we will change the name of America, and we will change the name of Israel. Now, some of you are perhaps sitting there saying, this is absolutely stupid. It's happened in the past, it can happen again. Don't be so sure of yourself. I'm not even going to talk about the gun control issue right now. But this is going to get very, very nasty. I'm just warning you, and maybe some of you know that, but it's going to get really nasty. What do we got to do about it, Kim? We are covered by prophetic preservation. But remember something. When God changes a person's name, it was for the future. In other words, when he changed, God's, uh, changed the name of um, Abraham to Abraham, it, because God believed God's promise of a son. And so he changed his name to Abraham, putting God's in there. So he changed his wife's name from Sarai to Sarah. Okay, you got me. Years later, after the angel of the Lord had wrestled with him all night long, Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Now remember something, each one of you, according to Revelation chapter 3, you've been given a new name, which means you have a nature inside of you that is able to fit with that description and that name. That's another teaching altogether, and it's in the Bible. Go to Revelation 3 something, I don't know what it is, and it's there. And you'll find out, he says, he is given, in fact, I'm going to read it to you right now. Can you, Miranda, can you bring me my, my Bible, which, which, which is normally, yeah. Um, and I'm going to read this to you because I want you to see something because we're going to be dealing with the book of Revelation as well and the future. You have to go and get it. That's usually, yeah. I had it earlier on. Okay. So Jacob wrestled with God and God said this, these words to him. Now, sometimes we've got to realize that what we're wrestling is for our future. What we're wrestling for is for what is already inside of us, our destiny. Remember, son, the enemy does not want you to get what God planned for you to have. You all know that. But what are we wrestling? We're not, now we know it's a spiritual battle. We cannot do it by ourselves. But Jacob wrestled with God. Now, that's a great wrestling match because God usually loses. Let me show you why. And when I don't say lose, you know, I'm just I'm kidding with you. So when Jacob wrestled with God, he was saying as he crossed over the ford of Jabbok, when he crossed over that ford, the Bible says that he went by himself and a man wrestled with him all night long. Now that wrestling match was for a purpose. First of all, God wanted to see if he could prevail not only over men, but over God. He can prevail with God, not over God, with God. Let me read this to you in Revelation chapter 3. I hope I can find it because this is one of the most unplanned meetings, although I have prayed a lot. And please write into Facebook and encourage me because I need it now. Oh, okay, thank you. Revelation chapter 3 verse, I don't know what it is. It's somewhere here. Let me find it. I'm going to find it. I'm going to find it. I'm going to find it. Um, no, I haven't found it. <laughs> Anyway, what I'll do is I'll just read it to you then. It's here somewhere. I just can't find it. Um, maybe somebody on Facebook can write it in. 
It's where it says, he has given us a stone and written on that stone a new name, which no one knows except him who receives it. I'm just quoting that out of my head. I think it's Romans, uh, I think, excuse me, it's Revelation chapter 3. I just cannot find it at this very second. And anyway, somebody can write in and tell me. It was unplanned. So the scripture says in Revelation, that's the revelation of Jesus Christ. It says, we have been given a white stone and written on that stone a new name which no one knows except him who receives it. 217. Thank you so much. Everybody go there. Everybody go. Revelation chapter 2 verse 17. Let's read it. I'm going to read it to you because it's a very exciting one. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. That's to you. To him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna to eat. Beautiful thought here. If you overcome, everybody stop. You say, you, some of you are thinking to yourselves, well, I, I didn't overcome yesterday. Did you overcome today? Did you overcome anything today? If you overcame just one thing, you're an overcomer. But Kim, I'm struggling with other things. If you can overcome one thing at a time, you're an overcomer. If you have nothing that you're overcoming, then you're, you're, you're a loser. But surely you can understand that we cannot overcome everything at the same time. But when something comes against you and you're able to overcome it, you are an overcomer. Beautiful. Good going, Kim. He who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna to eat. That which is hidden inside of you will come forth. Just like Hannah, the experience she had, she, we, she, we, we, we gave some of the hidden Hannah. Yeah. Anyway, so the hidden manna, when she had it in her spirit, I spoke it out. She had to step out by faith. Hannah could have said at that time, no, I'm not doing it. I've had people say that to me, but she didn't. She stepped out and began to do it by faith. And the result was, look what you have today. You have a person singing songs of God, prophesying, doing the most amazing stuff. And, and what happened was there was hidden manna in Hannah. <laughs> hidden Hannah, hidden manna in Hannah. There's hidden manna inside of you. And the way that it comes forth is when you overcome. Let me give you an example. God says to you, I'd like you to take 30 minutes of your time and I want you to go and pray. You say, I'm sorry, I cannot do it. And you don't overcome. I'm trying to tell you it's, it's in those areas that we need to overcome more than these silly little things that seem to hold us down and we worry about every single day. We've got to worry about the big stuff that, 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 that we have to overcome that comes against us. He who overcomes, was it 17? I will give hidden manna to eat. Okay, I've said it. And I will give him a white stone. And on the stone, a new name written, which no one knows except him who receives it. Wow. What is it saying? It says each one of you has something hidden that has to come out. The white stone speaks of revelation. When Jesus said, who do men say that I am to his disciples? Some said, you are Jeremiah. Some said, you are Elijah. Some said, you are John the Baptist. Some say, there's too many people quoting somebody else. What do you say? Jesus says to them, who do you say that I am? I'm sick of hearing what CBN is saying. Or C, excuse me, CNN is saying whoever. I didn't mean CBN. Sorry, Pat. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Not doing very well today. <laughs> CNN or ABC, whatever they are. I don't want to hear what they're saying. What do you say? Listen carefully, please. Nobody says a word. Simon Peter plucks up the courage because something's hidden inside of him. And he's going to overcome fear. And he says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. As he says that, Jesus swings around in response to revelation. Are you hearing me? What does God respond to more than anything else? Revelation. What he has revealed to you, speak out. I'm not ashamed to say I'm a prophet because God told me that, made me that. And I would be stupid not to say it. If God made you something, then you say it, you speak it out. So Simon Peter reveals what he gets. He says, you are Christ, the son of Jesus responds to him and says these words. 
He said, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father has revealed this to you. He says, listen to this now, he says to him, no longer are you Simon, but now you are Peter. What's that all about? Well, remember when he first met Peter, he said, you are Simon, but you will be called Peter. Hidden inside of you is a reigning rock. And it was only when he spoke out the revelation and that was released that he became Peter. It's only when you speak it out, you overcome. And revelation is spoken out that you become the stone. Now, what, what does the white stone speak about? So what did he say? What did he say to him? He said, where's my key? Forgive the den today, please. What did he say to him? Based on your revelation, I give you the key, the keys of the kingdom. Now, you may not understand fully what I'm saying, but I think a lot of you are quite spiritually minded to understand why prophetic revelation is so important because when God says something and you speak it out there is a response that comes from God and says now you've stepped into your higher nature now you have stepped into your higher calling you have another revelation two years from now you step into a higher it always goes higher and higher to a higher degree of understanding, insight, to a greater realm of existence. Okay, so Simon Peter gets the keys. What does he tell him he can do? Bind on earth, bind in heaven. Loose on earth, loose in heaven. By the way, you understand what the word Peter means. It means a stone. The, the, the Revelation chapter 2 verse 17 simply says, when you get a revelation, it is like a white stone, and on that stone written a new name, which only you know about. And then you change into that which is hidden inside of you. That was well put. At least that little piece was well put. Okay. In the New Testament, Saul of Tarsus, whose name means, meant, demanded. Became, he changed his name to, to Paul. You know what Paul means? Little. Lesser. He was no longer demanding. He changed his ma name to humble or less or little. And this is what the greatest apostle became in his own eyes as he looked increasingly upon the greatness of Christ. It's amazing how often a biblical character lives up to the meaning of his or her name. It is. Sometimes, as in the case of Paul, they, they deliberately took a name that meant what he wanted to be. Now, let me speak to you in closing these last few minutes because you and I have got to get to understand what is taking place in the spirit. Let's talk about the name Baal. Baal is how you actually say it. The prophets of Baal. The word, now we're going to talk about it because we're going to get to Jezza Baal and find out what is creeping into our White House, our capital, our politicians. No, 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 not because they're Democrats, not at all. But please take this warning and today we are going to take some action in the presence of the Spirit. Now you stay with me. Are, am I getting any yahoos from... Uh, from from okay, 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 okay. Thank you. And and I do this because sometimes I'm not I'm not sure if I'm connecting because I, you know, sometimes it irritates me and the Lord does this to me. I wake up this morning, I have this perfect message, and then I go into my garden and I oh no no no, it's just an hour and a half. It's beautiful, but it's it's and then I realize uh oh he's telling me to do it today. And I'm saying, God, I'm not even prepared. I don't even know the scriptures. And then we got 30, 20 minutes to go. And they're saying, well, you decide to start at 12 o'clock. Now, here I am. So I'm doing my best. Okay. Okay. Baal, Baal, means master, possessor, controller, possessor of anything or everything. It doesn't just want one thing. It wants to possess everything. It wants to control you. 
Don't take lightly what this prophet is saying regarding the same thing that happened with, with Elijah. There was a divided opinion when Elijah got onto Mount Carmel to destroy the prophets of Baal and ultimately Jezebel. Do you understand that they were of two opinions? Israel. I've never, I don't think the church has ever been as bad as it is now in terms of a divided opinion about the future. And if we don't give them a glimpse into the future by saying it's not just bad, God is doing good things, God is doing great things, then they're going to lose it and you and I are going to be suffocated. Okay. Each person has certain traits, uh, vices, and then of course virtues that exist in your soul. Now you and I have spoken about the soul. And each soul, listen to this, please listen to my statement. Each soul wants to coexist, which means to exist together. Okay? Like-minded like souls search for each other. Now, we're not talking about virtues only, vices. Virtues, wonderful. I see a virtue in somebody. I like that. I am drawn to that person. Our souls attach. We're not talking about uh, marriages and stuff like that. We're talking about in life. Even though marriage is it's a very important issue. I'm saying souls like to exist together. Now, that's in virtue, but also in vice, in evil. Souls look for one another to do things together. When they built the tower in Genesis 11, which top would reach into heaven, they were totally united. Their souls were coexisting. And they were doing it. The soul of the church needs coexistence as never before. With each other, I'm saying. To be united. I was telling my team the other day, I'm so proud of the, of the, of the Trinity. They do such a great job. You don't get Jesus complaining to the Father. I don't want to do that job. And, and the Holy Spirit saying to Jesus, I'm not going to. You don't have that. They are completely united. That's why they're called one. Now, it's, it's the same thing is with the soul. You and I, all of you watching, we are existing together and we have one thought in mind. Of course, that's Christ to be, to be sent to the world and shown the good news. But also, what is he saying now? And let us realize that the spirit of Pythos and the spirit of Jezebel have now sought each other so they could coexist and they could become multiple powers. What does that mean for us? It means control, control, control. Listen, control is not always bad, but it's getting worse. Now, this is dangerous when these souls try to coexist, when there is evil and bad in a human soul, because the mischief doubles. The mischief multiplies as they coexist. The name Jezebel means non-cohabitant, without obligation. So Jezebel, if you want an, an answer, is not just a wicked woman, because people have picked on these poor women for years. Jezebel can be in a male form. Jezebel means non-cohabitant, without obligation doesn't need to, to, to be any specific place. Jezebel is a fantasy space. She's an effect, a personality, a lifestyle. Now let's give you a bit of history on, on Jezebel because we're going to pray against this together in the next few weeks. I've set myself aside to fast like I've never before and pray because God called me to this nation and to Israel, United Kingdom, Australia, Africa, to different nations to speak to them. Now, who was Jezebel in history? The, the daughter of Eth Baal, who was the priest king of Tyre and Sidon. She was married to Ahab, as you know, to ratify an alliance between Tyre and Israel. T-Y-R-E, that's the city, okay? By which Omri provision was made for her to continue, listen, to worship her native god, Baal, in Samaria, her new home. So in other words, it was coming from the top. You realize when somebody has authority to that degree, the queen, it then gets released to the nation. 
She had a strong domineering character and was self-willed and she was forceful. A fanatical devotee of Melquat, the Tyrian Baal. Now, that's just a little bit of history I thought I'd give you so you understand she came into Israel as a queen. Her staff, just the people that worked for her, numbered 450 of these prophets. The 400 prophets of the goddess Asherah. By the time Ahab was king. So she had 450 of the prophets. 400 of the prophets were false prophets that she'd surrounded herself with. And what she clamored for more than anything was for her God to have at least equal rights with Yahweh, God of Israel. I know I'm speaking out of Revelation. I know that I'm speaking from my heart. And I know it's a lot that I'm pouring out to you. But I want you to hear me because God told me to do this. That she wanted her God, Baal, to have equal rights in Israel with Yahweh, God of Israel. Now, I want to tell you who the God of America is. It's Jesus Christ. And I'm not saying the Lord God, or I'm not saying Yahweh, or, or Shalom. I'm saying His name. Jesus Christ. People came to this nation for that purpose. This nation was brought to being for one reason. To announce to the world that there is only one God, and that is Jesus Christ. There can be no cohabitant. There can be no equal other than Jesus Christ. There's no other God that is equal to him. Do you understand me? So, Kim, you're going to get into trouble because in this country we let all religions operate. I know. But there's only one God. Those aren't real gods. Jesus Christ is Lord. Thanks, Charlie. This brought her into conflict with the prophet Elijah. The reason that God is raising up prophets all over the world is because this spirit is so prevalent. This spirit is endeavoring to raise the names of religions and gods and make them equal with Christ. Then it'll get worse. Now we come to the real issue. Now Elijah says, oh, I see. The conflict begins with the prophet Elijah. A battle between Yahweh and Baal is about to be is about to take place in the United States of America. Come, Joel. In the United States of America. Did you hear what I said? Kim, I've never heard you being so negative. This is not about negative. We're still going to be blessed. We're still going to have our families. We're still going to see God's abundance in our life. I want you to know that this force is bringing a conflict with the prophets because it is has decided that it will dwell in this United States of America. The battle, I'm going to say it as a prophetic word, between Yahweh, Yeshua, and Baal is about to take place. A battle in the United States of America. A spiritual battle. Is about to take place. Kim, you're saying that we're in trouble? No, I'm saying to you, get up. Get out of slothfulness. Rise up and pray and fast with me, is my request. You don't have to give up all your food. All you've got to do is give up something and say, we're going to do for the, for the first hundred days. In the United States of America and all over the world, I want all of you to join me. I'm going to go on a partial fast to see this victory brought about and the prosperity of his people to take place. A battle between Yeshua and Baal is being fought in the United States of America and is beginning right now. Now, what happened? What happened on that mountain of Carmel? A massacre. I'm not being dramatic. A massacre took place of the prophets of Baal. The problem was, instead of diminishing Jezebel's zeal, it augmented it. She had a conception, and I want every person to please try and listen to me now, 
of an absolute monarchy. Her conception, her dream was of an absolute monarchy to rule as long as she lived. That spirit is on our nation and will spread if we, the prophets, don't do something about it. I'm not exaggerating. This is a heavy den, but I need to use this to address it. Are you speaking about the president? Are you speaking about the vice? I'm not speaking about it. I'm talking about a spirit. You work it out yourself. But this force has come to join hands. And I'll tell you the one thing that Elijah did that I love. He mocked their gods. He said, do what you have to do to bring fire from heaven because here is a sacrifice in front of you, in your presence. I'm going to offer the greatest offering that Israel has ever given on this Mount of Carmel. I'm going to do it in the presence of Baal. And they began to dance around and scream and hour after hour they cut themselves, they bled, they urinated, they did all kinds of stuff. That's what the Baals did. They were so full of filth. As they did it, Elijah stood up and said, where is your God? Has he gone to the toilet? Has he gone to refresh himself? And began to mock the, the, the God of Baal, the Baals. Now listen to me, please. This is great stuff. Don't go to a major key so we can and go to the key of D major if you can. Listen to this, people. I'm finished with Jezebel now. I just wanted to tell you that. But I do want to tell you this. What is going to bring about victory in the United States of America, Canada, United Kingdom, France, countries all over the world that God has pinpointed me to pray for? Even though oppressed nations, Russia, God has told me there's certain things he wants to do and he is plucking out people from all of these nations and they are going to have this unbelievable soul connection like we have right now and going to break the power of this force as Elijah did on Mount Carmel. Thank God I'm finished with that because I had to share it. It's off my heart now. Now let's do what they did. Every person watching me at this very moment, I want you to stop just for a second. I want you to think just for one minute about what took place. And then we're going, to, we're going to play and we're going to get you into a place of hearing from God. Elijah stood and mocked them. And then he said, get out of my way. And built an altar. Now you've heard me talk about this before, but we are going to act today. What was the purpose of it? He said, bring me water. Pour it on the wood, because I'm going to prove God so much to you that I'm going to take that which you don't have, pour it on the, on the wood so it's impossible for it to burn. And then the fire and the water together, okay, the fire and the water together are going to bring about rain. 